Hello everybody, good evening, welcome to the United Stands, I'm Mark Goldbridge and this is your latest uh, Manchester United news. Welcome to the Members Club, James Vint and David Baccaro, they've literally just joined as we're live here. Lots to talk about on the show tonight. We'll be talking about Eric Ten Hag demanding that Manchester United don't sell Casemiro and Varane. So what's the story behind that and why might they leave? Also, as reported by me and therefore us, yesterday I said... Spurs in talks with Tadebo. Somebody in the chat said it's just paper talk. Romano Fabrizio has confirmed it today. Ahead of the game. Not I don't want to be ahead of the game on this one, but how are Spurs getting Tadebo when Nice owned Tadebo and Sir Jim owns Tadebo? Incredible. Incredible. Uh, also, we're going to be talking about uh, the situation with the sale. There's been an update that's just come out in the last few hours as well. And also, um, another story that might be quite interesting to discuss as well, that Sir Jim Radcliffe wants to make make cuts at Manchester United. He wants to save money. He wants to get rid of people. I mean, look, we don't know what Sir Jim Radcliffe's plan is. You've got people out there that want to sell it to you as lollipop lane with candy floss clouds and raspberry lemonade and gingerbread doors and, I don't know, cake grass. Is that, I think that's two words for weed, actually, but that's not what I meant. My point is, um, nobody knows. Nobody knows what Sir Jim Radcliffe's going to do. Maybe it's going to be good. Maybe he's going to cut jobs and, and save club money. I mean, I think that might fit in with Varane and Casemiro because if Varane and Casemiro are up for sale, but Ten Hag doesn't want them to go, who's putting them up for sale? Hmm? Who's putting up for sale? I don't know. Uh, it was bad wording, Ben. Right. Okay. Loads to get into on the show. But as you know, Manscaped is here. Not literally. Um, you're not going to see that. Um, but the only bush you're going to see is my tree, which is there. Um, anyway, it's going to be one of those shows. Um, we're early tonight because I'm doing Liverpool against um, Liverpool against um, West Ham. Watch along on that school. And I've got my reinforcements for that. It's going to be a good night over there. It's Christmas after all. Um, but what I want to talk about first is, before we get into all this stuff, because there's lots to talk about tonight, it's going to be a fun night, I believe it. Uh, Manscaped, 20% off with the code TUS. Link in the description or scan the QR code. Free delivery as well. So 20% off and free delivery. Basically, you can get the lawnmower, which is the, the original goat uh, for down there. Trim the grass to make the yard look bigger. Fantastic products. You got the weed whacker for up your nose. You can buy these individually or you can buy them all. Uh, they are very, 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 very good product quality products. This is the beard trimmer. It's got 11 different lengths on it. You know what? This this is yeah, so fast so fast. It's the quickest one I've ever had. Powerful as well. And then the brand new handyman, which if you like to be clean shaven, is uh, is amazing. It always gets Carol excited for some reason. The noise. I don't know what it is. Uh, but check it out. 20% off. Free worldwide shipping. Manscaped. You won't regret it. They're fantastic products. Links in the description and you can scan the QR code. Big shout out to Manscaped. Um, fantastic. Fantastic products. Um, manager deserves the support and glazes out, says Keva. Okay, right. So we're going to fly straight into the first story here. Uh, and that is that it's coming in from Rob Dawson, ESPN. He's been on the show before. He says, Eric Ten Hag wants to keep both... Casemiro and Rafael Varane passed the January transfer window. In the situation that they force a move, Ten Hag wants replacements signed. I've got to say, this is absolutely classic ABBA to me. And I love a bit of ABBA around New Year's Eve. I think ABBA are the original goats when it comes to New Year's Eve. Dancing Queen, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. And it will be a very happy New Year for Mr. Goldbridge and therefore Mrs. Goldbridge if Rafael Varane and Casemiro stay at Manchester United beyond January. And I'm encouraged by this because I've got to say there has been a lot of, and I'll take, I'll take your thoughts in the chat as always, but there has been a lot of confusion in the United fan base and around Manchester United as to why, and this is genuine, look, we get little bits of information, as you know, which obviously we, we tell you that when we get it. But when it comes to Varane and Casemiro, tight lips sink ships, um, loose lips sink ships. Why do loose lips sink ships? What lips are we talking about? Um, is it because they... I, I don't know. I don't want to think about that. Anyway, what if Super League returns tomorrow? A European court will, will rule tomorrow, says Sven. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. But essentially, what I want to talk about is why is it that Varane and Casemiro have consistently been spoken about leaving in January? And I think we're starting to get a little bit of clarity here because as fans of United, which most of us are, it's bizarre to let Varane or Casemiro go. 
we've seen over the last two games against two of the best teams we've played this season, Bayern Munich and Liverpool, just how good Varane is. We know from last season just how good Casemiro is. So why would they be leaving in January if Ten Hag doesn't want them to go? Well, I think there's two theories here. Take your pick. I think either the players themselves want to go, which we've consistently heard they don't. We've heard from Varane's side he doesn't want to go. He doesn't want to be forced out. We've heard from Casemiro's side he doesn't want to go. He doesn't want to be forced out. We're now hearing that Ten Hag doesn't want them to go. So if the players don't want to go, and, and Ten Hag doesn't want them to go, that leaves the very obvious thing, and I'm not saying it, it is the solution, but I think it's a very obvious solution, that this is coming from up above. And I don't mean Jesus. He's got no say in Manchester United's transfer policy, or God. I'm talking about the Glazers. I'm talking about CEOs. I'm talking about we're broke, and we can sell these players and bring money in. And I refute this massively. If we're going to become a football club that sells players that the manager doesn't want to sell and they don't want to go because they're valuable, what does that mean for the future of Man United? If you're selling players the manager doesn't want to sell and players that don't want to go because you can get money for them, how is that ambition? How is that making us better? So look, it's really interesting. It's very interesting. And it sort of fits in with what we've sort of been talking about since the exit from Europe is that we've just lost 50 million quid and we're broke. And again, I'll use the analogy. If you are poor or you're, you, well, no, that's not what, that's not an analogy. If you're poor, um, Merry Christmas. Um, but if you are in financial problems, but you've had money, um, you need to sell assets to make money. You're selling your Ferrari. You know, you're selling your paintings. You find wine collection. Is that what United are doing here? You know, we're selling our assets to survive, which is which is very concerning. And then that feeds into another story I want to bring in as well. Have managers' demands ever been met at United, says Diablo? Well, I personally don't really think that they have, uh, you know, if we're being absolutely honest. But it was interesting as well because there was a story um, that came in today. Um, I forget where it was. I need to find it. But basically... In light of this Varane and uh, Casemiro thing, there was another story that came in today that uh, Eric Ten Hag, not Eric Ten Hag, um, Sir Jim Radcliffe, uh, it's coming in from the mail, uh, that Sir Jim Radcliffe is set to recommend job cuts and efficiency savings at Manchester United after completing his planned purchase of 25% of the club. So this is coming in from the mail that Sir Jim Radcliffe is going to recommend job cuts and efficiency savings at Manchester United. Well, what is a fucking efficiency saving? Welcome to the Members uh, Club, Godfrey. Uh, I can confirm, by the way, the Christmas show, it's going up tomorrow. So the Christmas show in Manchester is going up on the Members section tomorrow, 100%. So if you're a member, you'll see that tomorrow. But I'll remind you tomorrow about that. But if, if and look, again, this is just pure speculation, but it's in the mail that Sir Jim Radcliffe is going to recommend job cuts and efficiency savings. Selling Casemiro to Saudi Arabia is efficiency savings. You save his wage, you get money in, and it compensates you for missing out on Europe. That is an efficiency saving. Selling Varan to Saudi Arabia saves you his wages, brings money in. That is an efficiency saving. You can't do that with Scott McTominay. You can't do that with Delo. There are some players you can't do that with. And there's a reason you can't do it with them, because there's not a cue to buy them. You sell your high value assets to, to raise money for the club to help the club survive. This concerns me. And, and you've got to have eyes open about this, because this could happen at Manchester United. We could be, if, if Ten Hag doesn't want Casemiro and Varane to go, and Casemiro and Varane don't want to go, then they're obviously being sold by the management who are trying to raise funds, which reminds me of Leeds when they were going under 20 years ago. Monthly reminder that you're a Pratt, says Elijah. Thank you very much. And Robbo is a new member of the club as well. So we will see where we go with this. But it is a concern because they're, 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 this cannot be the way forward. And it's interesting what Rob Dawson is saying, that Ten Hag does not want Casemiro and Varane to go. But if they go, he wants replacements. Well, I mean... <laughs> If you're if you're if you're letting them go to raise money, you're not going to let them go to raise money to buy other players. That's not efficiency. Efficiency is raising money to use it for something that you need. Why would you sell Casemiro and Varane to replace them for something that you need when you've already got them? 
I, I worry that we're just going to sell them to raise funds for other reasons within the football club. Um, and look, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying that Sir Jim Radcliffe's going to come into this football club and say, look, if we want to make this football club make money, we're going to have to, you know, rip it down and cut costs and operate at a, a lower level. Um, but, you know, I will say this to that. I never fucking signed up for this. I didn't sign up, I didn't sign up for some cost cutting exercise because you can't afford to run the football club. Guitar, we're going to buy it all, clear the debt and chuck money at the club. So I'm sorry, I'm not applauding and getting on board for cost cutting exercises because you can't afford to run the club properly. Like we had an option to remove the glazers, remove the debt and chuck a load of money into the club. And that was, for me, one of the only reasons we were going to be successful potentially. I can't get behind, let's sack people, let's get rid of good players so we can stay afloat. You shouldn't have bought the fucking club. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, Paul Woolley says he didn't get run over. There's still time. Um, not you see, think before you speak. I, Paul, it's not the end of your birthday yet, but I'm sure you'll be fine. And happy birthday. Um, so look, we don't know what is going to happen, um, and it's not always going to be good. We could be we could be Poundland FC, um, but look, I, I really do think that if we remove Casemiro or Varane in January, it's very 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 concerning because you're doing it to raise money for what. Um, these are two players that could potentially... I mean, I believe if we get Martinez and Varane back together with Luke Shaw, Wambasaka, Casemiro, Mainu, Bruno, Hoyland, Anthony, Ganacho, Rashford, you know, that those sort of players, I think we can climb the league. We could potentially have a good running in, in the FA Cup. But if we remove Varane and Casemiro, I think it's going to be a very, very, very tough season. Is it time to question Luke Shaw and his injury-prone form, says Luke? Mate, he's just played man of the. He's put in a man of the match performance at the weekend. Why are we questioning Luke Shaw? Um, he played against Bayern Munich, came off at half time, and got himself back fit in three days. No, it's not. Uh, I know it's a long shot, but I pray every day now that I'm the summertime. So Jim uh, brings in Sane, Anana, and Lucas Paqueta. We can only hope, says Barney. Look, there is a flip side to the coin. Hopefully, this deal is going to work out really, really well for us. But I think this Casemiro and Varane thing is going to be very, very interesting. Rudrish says that Casemiro and Varane are the only credible players in that squad. Um, second bit of news, Fabrizio Romano, although I sort of want to give a high five to the community here because we were speaking about this yesterday. Uh, I mentioned at some point yesterday um, that uh, Spurs were in talks with Tadebo. Um, and I mentioned this yesterday. If I've not said it before, I mentioned it yesterday. But today, Fabrizio Romano has confirmed that. He has confirmed that Spurs are in talks with Tadebo. So, so what some people thought was a rumour yesterday is actually factual. Tadebo is in talks with Spurs. Spurs do want Tadebo in January. What does this mean for Manchester United? Well, again, I just think a little bit like Varane and Casemiro and why the hell we're doing that when the manager wants to keep them and they want to stay. Why are we cutting costs off good players? Tadebo plays for fucking Nice. Their name's Nice, by the way, not fucking Nice. That Tadebo plays for Nice. Sir Jim Radcliffe owns Nice. Why would you sell a player to a direct rival for top four? It, it, it beggars belief. It really beggars belief. You do not have to sell him in January. If Man United can't afford him, wait till the bloody summer. Do not sell a player we want to a direct rival for Champions League football or, for, or fifth or sixth. It, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It really doesn't. And if we get a story that United were never in for Tadebo, bullshit. Absolute bullshit. He was on the shortlist in the summer from Ten Hag. So this is a player that Ten Hag and Man United like, that Sir Jim Radcliffe owns, who is just about to buy 25% of Man United, and you're going to sell Tadebo to Spurs. I mean, I don't, I don't understand how this happens. I don't understand how Gakpo went to Liverpool when he had the same agent as Ten Hag, but that's because we had no bloody money. So is it lightning? I mean, is Tadebo going to be this year's Gakpo? I remember Boxing Day, it was announced that Gakpo was signing for um, Liverpool. Are we going to get another knockout blow on Boxing Day that Tadebo is going to Spurs? And let's not forget as well, he plays for Nice. We get a discount the same way Salzburg give discounts to Leipzig. There is a discount there for Manchester United as well. So if we don't get to Debo and we go after somebody else, we're going to end up with somebody who's more expensive. Uh, I mean, but look, when Romano is talking about Tadebo to Spurs, that means that Spurs are in advanced talks with 
to Debo. So we've got to be very, very careful about this. Now, I'll, I'll say, granted, granted, uh, he does say that um, Manchester United are still monitoring the situation. I'll tell you what, Manchester United shouldn't be monitoring that situation. Manchester United should be in control of that situation because our new part owner owns Nice. Uh, life principle I live by, says Sumi. I assume the worst and plan accordingly. As fans, we should do this with Radcliffe and react accordingly. We're online fans, so it's okay to be hysterical. Get proven wrong is a win, says Sumi. But look, I, I, com I actually completely agree with you on this. When it comes to this sale, I'm a realist. We're not having a full sale and the Glazers aren't leaving. But when it comes to this sale, um, I'm a realist that Sir Jim's going to get 25%. And I'm hopeful that there will be some positives. But I'll be honest, I'm going into this as a cynic because the Glazers still own the football club. Nothing to do with Sir Jim, really. This is to do with the fact that the Glazers still own the club. So I am going to be very cynical about it. I am going to call it out. And if there are positives, I think you've got to be cynical about it. Just like on the video this afternoon about, you know, United might write, write off Sancho's contract. Call it for what it is. We're not mushrooms and we're not fed on shit. I am not going to sit there with a smile on my uh, smile on my afternoon. I'm not going to sit there with a smile on my face on a Wednesday afternoon thinking Manchester United are going to uh, terminate Sancho's contract when it's financially bullshit. You can't do it. So we must analyse every story that comes out because there will be, quite expectedly, I take it on board, there has to be a lot of PR spin. There has to be a lot of positivity. They have to sell you a positive. And it's your job to analyse it and think, do I believe that? Actions speak louder than words. Uh, Tom says uh, it's the same message again and again. United are looking into or considering a signing and United are selling Deadwood. Will we ever learn to ignore the spin? And well, Tom's exactly right there. Um, Rice and Peas says, would Sancho being kicked out of the club hurt United with financial fair play? Paying off a contract could be damaging to the net spend. We're never going to do it. We're never going to do it. Watch my video this afternoon. We are never going to pay off and terminate Jaden Sancho's contract. Quick maths suggest that that's going to cost you about 40 million quid in wages just to let to get rid of him. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're never going to do that. Uh, the Glazers will never stop the dividends. Instead, they'll get rid of our only good players, says Matthias. Thank you very much, Matthias. Well, look, also on the sale, just a little bit of breaking news. Um, we've been told, the United Stand have been told, that it's very unlikely that this Sir Jim Radcliffe deal will get announced before uh, Christmas now. So a deal that we were on tender hooks in the international break. You know, I was cancelling trips to London because I thought it was going to be announced six weeks ago. Six weeks later, we are no further forward. And actually, we may still be waiting another two weeks because if it's not announced by Friday, it's Christmas Day on Monday, it's Boxing Day on Tuesday. Um, I can't see them announcing it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday between Christmas and New Year. So I think it will be into early January, which is when the transfer window is open. However, Mike Keegan, who has been very good on the sale process over the last 12 months, is saying this in the last hour. There is still hope that there will be an official announcement on Sir Jim Radcliffe this week. If, however, it's not done on Friday, then it will be into the new year. So he is saying that there is still an opportunity for, for it to happen this year. We might get an early Christmas present. Some might say it's like getting socks. Um, I suppose an early Christmas present from if, you, if it had been guitar would have been, would have been a PS5. Um, with Sir Jim Radcliffe, what is it? Is it socks? Is it is it is it a, you know who knows? It could be a hidden gem. I don't know. But um, yeah, it's not looking likely at the moment. Um, Sorry, sorry, sorry. I've just uh, I've just seen something here that uh, I hadn't discussed, so we'll bring that in in a minute. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct there. Um, oh yeah, I know what I wanted to talk about. Malin. Okay, so we'll come back to that now. Uh, any plans for a show in Birmingham? Mark says Paul. Um, I I know for a fact that the Christmas show was a success. I really believe that. No, it was a great show. The Christmas show. We had 600 people there. Um, I know that we're going to do a tour next year. Um, there's another tour. There's probably two tours going to happen next year, actually. I think we're going to take the podcast on tour as well. 
Um, and also the Christmas show next year is probably going to get announced before anything. Um, and all I can say is it's going to be in Dublin. So uh, we should be announcing that soon. The, the live shows this year have just been um, probably one of my highlights of the year, actually, because especially when we went through like COVID together to to be able to physically get out and meet people. And it was great. It took a long time at the end of the Christmas show. Um, there must have been three, four hundred people queuing up for, for photos. But, you know, it took a long time, but it's worth doing it because you're all fantastic and you support the channel. And hopefully next year we'll get to meet a lot more of you. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been great. You know, it's been great. I, I mean, I love the community that we've got. and We, you know, we meet up every day and we discuss stuff like I'm discussing with you now. But uh, it's great to get out and do some shows. And you can see that Christmas show tomorrow as a member. And I'm going to give some memberships tomorrow as well. Um, so there you go, Paul. Thank you, thank you for your super chat. Um, Barney says, are you planning to do a call-in show during the Chantry window like the old days? Yes, Barney. You've, you, you've read my mind. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So the next story I want to talk about is back to Rob Dawson. He's saying that Mallon is valued at around 25 million by Dortmund and a swap deal involving Jaden Sancho could become an option, although direct talks are yet to take place. So look, I, I, I'm going to say this now. I'm going to make a statement. Uh, try to do one in California, Mark, says Yusuf. Well, we are in America next year, so let's see what happens with that. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say it very, very clearly. Um, Manchester United will do business in January. They're, they're going to do something. What it's going to be in some, in some ways... Um, is it is quite exciting because we don't know what we're going to do in January. However, as we discussed this morning, as Fabrizio re revealed, we are talking with Gavassi, we are talking with Malin, and we are talking with Werner. Now, this preposterous story that United are going to write Jaden Sancho's contract off is, of course, nonsense. But desperation may lead to desperate deals. A swap deal with Malin with for Dortmund would be like an early Christmas present. They take £75 million off Manchester United two years ago, and two years later, they end up doing a swap for a £25 million player. I mean, they're just in the money. This has got this has got Pogba and Juventus written all over it. You know, Juventus got Pogba on a free, we buy him back for £89 million, and then they get back, they get him back on a free. So it's, it's, um, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Um, I suppose when you look at um, uh, Doobie says I'd love to bring uh, Lone Welbeck back. I suppose when you look at it, the whole Sancho scenario just needs to get resolved and gets resolved very get very, get resolved very very quickly, doesn't it? Um, I I don't really know what we're going to do. The whole world knows there's a problem. The whole world knows that uh, Man United are desperate to get rid of him. He's not. He's basically not playing for Manchester United, so we're never going to be in a strong position here. Um, we can't write his contract off. It's ridiculous money to do that. So what we need to do is do the best bad deal we can do. And therefore, the best bad deal we do could be to swap him for someone like Malin. Um, and we'll have to wait and see what happens. But um, look, Malin's a very good player on uh, FIFA. I had him on a lot of my career modes um, flashback. But... Um, I, I don't know that he's I don't know that he's good enough for Manchester United and what we're trying to achieve, if I'm being honest. Uh, love watching this channel. All your posts, especially with the virtual PS5 club, got me through lockdown. Now a beautiful wife and butter melting son, says Matthew. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Matthew. Um, Sinead says, we have failed to do the right thing for so many years now. It seems like a stocking filler we have to pretend we don't know about, says Sinead. Uh, get rid of Ten Hag, then Sancho may finally uh, get to uh, score. Uh, says one uh, puggy. Well, that, yeah, that's not that's not going to happen. And um, when I mean, I, I, I think you're in the very, 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 very small minority there. Um, it's like having a marmite, marmite, marmite milkshake, mates. I mean, no one's going to taste that. I'm afraid. Um, I don't think anybody in their right mind would get rid of Ten Hag to bring Jaden Sancho back. Um, I'm sure some people would, but uh, I, I don't know what that says about Man United if that's our principles. Um, oh my God, have you seen the run West Hammer on? Uh, praying Varane plays well, says uh, CT. I can't wait for this game against West Ham at the weekend. I, I know it's been, uh, you know, the Liverpool game is still being discussed by some people now, but I can't wait for this West Ham game on Saturday. Uh, I, I feel that that Liverpool game is just a stopgap. It really is just treading water. Are we going to go back underwater again or are we going to climb out? 
Um, hi, Mark, says Dan. Where I'm from, nobody really cares about Manchester United. Thank you to you and the community for giving me an outlet to share my opinions. Thank you very much, Dan. I wish we got a pender, uh, says um, Yusuf from Leipzig. And we literally have Ahmad, but he wants to replace Sancho with another Dutch player, says Marvin. Well, you know, I think I think Marvin makes a cracking point there. We do have Ahmad. And Ahmad, last... I just want to say this about Ahmad, right? We we, we are very flippant as football fans. Uh, we, we live in the now. We, we're very recency bias. You know, there are people that wanted Greenwood back in the summer. But there are people that didn't want Greenwood back, who I now notice do want him back. And they want him back because he's just scored some goals at Getafe. But in the summer, they were like, get rid of him. He's a scumbag and all that. So people just are very recency driven in football. And, you know, I think we're all guilty about of that to a certain extent. But I just want to refresh your mind about Ahmad. This is not the guy that was on loan at Rangers and didn't do very well. This is the guy that was a bloody revelation at Sunderland last season. A revelation. He was brilliant. In fact, did he not win player of the year in the, in the EFL or something like that? He's come back to Man United. He got injured on pre-season. The potential of Ahmad is still to be tested. Like, this was meant to be his breakthrough season based on a very, very, very accomplished uh, loan at Sunderland. I still think Ahmad could be a real diamond for Manchester United. We have to test it. So you talk about, oh, if Sancho goes, you talk about Greenwood coming back, you talk about Rashford, Pellistri... I think Ahmad is a player, again, that in the second half of this season could be really important. The problem Ahmad is going to have is the problem that everybody is going to have, is that because we're out of Europe, there isn't that many games for Ten Hag to change it. And what I mean by that is, when we're playing these Premier League games and the FA Cup games, they, they must win. We have, to, we have to try and win the FA Cup. It's the only cup we can win. We have to win every Premier League game because we've got to get as high up the league as we can. So how you integrate people like Ahmad will be interesting. But on the other hand, Kobe Mainu has started away to Everton, away to Liverpool and away to Newcastle. And he's 18. So if you're good enough, you will be given a chance. Do you think Mainu will have a better career than Paul Pogba says, Alex? Look, I, I don't do this with young players. I, I, I don't overhype young players. Um... I don't set targets for young players because it's dangerous. Look at what happened with Mason Greenwood. Look at what happened with Paul Pogba. You know, look at what's happened with Marcus Rashford. You can be good for a couple of years and then you can be inconsistent. Uh, there's no point. I think Kobe Mainu has potential of, uh, to a very exciting level. But we must not overhype it. We must not predict it. We must just enjoy it at the moment and see what happens. Because injury, you know, you just don't know what could go wrong. I'm hoping, like Ganacho, a lot of things go right. Archie, welcome to the Members Club. Thank you very much. Um, but but I think he looks like a fantastic player. I really, really do. And I think he's going to grow physically and as a player as well. And what he could become at Manchester United is really, really exciting. So, look, hopefully there's a few more coming through. I mean, I don't know whether you saw the youth play last night, but Fletcher looks really interesting. We know about Lacey. He's another good one. There's a few others coming through as well. I still think Dan Gore has got great potential. There's talk about him going on loan to Preston in the championship. So I think we've got some really exciting players coming through. We know, and I, For me, it's another reason to keep Ten Hag because we know he will... You, I, I like the um, I like the way that Ten Hag promotes youth. He doesn't just pick any player. He only picks the good ones. But that means you'll have a higher um, higher ceiling. So I think there's some great young players coming through. You've also got to add into the young player equation people like Rasmus, who's only 20. So, you, you know, the future could be, could be bright, but we've got to get through the next few weeks and months first. Erika says, best United in the world uh, from... G best United stand in the world from Germany. Thank you very much, Erika. Thank you very much for being a member for two months. Uh, Gore was very solid when I watched him, says Cocky. And Mainu is only looks elite level in young setups, says Rudrish. Well, I think he's looked very good in the uh, first team, uh, to be honest with you. So I don't know what you're talking about. Um, Mark, if we want to succeed as a football team, we need to make the midfield Casemiro, Bruno and Mainu, says Saf. Well, you know, you're speaking to the converted there. I don't think there's anybody that disagrees with that. Um, and one puggy says, Mark, how does Ten Hag just pick the good ones? He plays McTominay and Anthony. Well, I like Anthony. I think Anthony's played well the last few days. But again, look, we're previewing the West Ham game tomorrow. Remember that I said, and I've said it to you a couple of times, 
I'm very happy with that Liverpool result, but the result is what pleases me. If we play West Ham on Saturday and he picks McTominay and Bruno, I hope we win. But even if we win, I'm worried because that has to stop. We saw against Liverpool that the pivot of Amrabat and Maynou makes us a better organised side. We can't go back to this one holding midfielder and two attacking midfielders. It's bullshit and it's got to stop. And I don't know what he's going to do on Saturday. But if he does go with Bruno and McTominay, I'm going to say, look, I hope we win. But there's no future. There's no future in this. It's, it, 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 it's stupidity. Scott McTominay is not good enough to start for Manchester United. He should be on the bench for the last 20 minutes when you need a goal. And he's good at that. But he shouldn't be starting games for Manchester United. Sell, keep, bench, Hoyland, Ganacho, Ahmed. Uh, Ahmed says, Jay, I don't like sell, bench, keep on the United stand because this, the, this is a United fan channel. And I don't want I don't want to be saying sell. I'm not going to do it. In fact, I'm not going to do it. I'm too loyal on this channel to do that to players, um, especially three players that I like. So I won't do it. Everyone in the chat can do it. Um, what about Mason Mount as the United Wings? Wow, you know, you could almost have a show in yourself on Mason Mount, couldn't you? What, what, what if, I mean, I, on the one hand, I say I don't like one holding midfielder and two attacking midfielders. But on the other hand, I'm like, well, where the fuck is Mason Mount fitting into this team? I don't understand what Mason Mount is going to be in this team. I mean, how will you ever play a midfield three of Casemiro, Amrabat, Bruno or Casemiro, Maynou, Bruno? How are you ever going to play that midfield three when you've got Scott McTominay and um, Mason Mount floating around? like a turd that won't flush. Um, and I, I mean that in the nicest possible way. You've, you've, you, you know, there's, there's, a, there's an unavoidable question. Um, Junior, who is a member, says McTominay is our best player. I think you're a troll, mate. Or you're pissed. Enjoy your Christmas party. But the, the, the point I'm trying to make is Mason Mount remains a problem to solve. And somebody said a couple of weeks ago in the live chat, I like Mason Mount but it's actually quite useful that he's injured because he's a problem we don't have to solve. And, and I thought, you know what? You're completely wrong, but I get what you're saying. While he, while, whilst he's injured, you can't, you don't have to deal with it because where does he play? I, I mean, I, just, I do not see, if you look at the lineup against Liverpool, that's the way you need to play against good teams. So where would Mason Mount play? He can't play in the Amrabat or the Manu position. You know, the McTominay position, he could play that, but that's Bruno's. I don't want to see Bruno or Mount playing on the right wing. They can't play as a false nine. You don't play them on the left wing. Where, where, where does this, where does Mason Mount fit into Manchester United? Um, I don't know. Is the honest answer. And you know that's what that it's that sort of thing that makes me feel a bit a bit sceptical. Because on the one hand, you can talk about Rasmus and Maynou and all these good players that we've got coming through. You can talk about, hopefully, Casemiro and Varane staying. You can talk about Luke Shaw being back, Martinez coming back, Eriksen coming back. You can talk about all these positives. And then you remember, what the hell are we going to do with Mason Mount? Because it costs £60 million. I just don't get it. I don't get it. I've always said, I think Ten Hag made a huge mistake because I think what he thought he could do, and he tried it at the start of the season, and it didn't work. I think he thought... He could go from Casemiro, Eriksen and Bruno last year to Casemiro, Mount and Bruno this year. But what he didn't factor in was that Casemiro, Eriksen and Bruno didn't actually work last season. The games we got pelted was because our midfield got run through. And this season, a lot of teams figured that out who weren't the big teams. So people were running through our midfield like Wolves and Palace and Brighton. You can't play Casemiro, Mount and Bruno. It exposes whoever plays in the Casemiro role and they get at our defence. But I think Ten Hag thought he could. I think his master plan was to get higher up the pitch with two attacking midfielders and overwhelm teams with a, with a high press. But they're too intelligent. Everybody's used to a high press now. Everyone can play through a high press. And then suddenly you're overwhelming our defence because we've only got one holding midfielder. I, th I think that I think the Mason Mount plan was that Mount Bruno and Casemiro, but it doesn't work. And even if it's Mount Amrabat and Bruno, Mount Maynou and uh, Bruno, it won't work. Um, so I don't know what the future is for Mason Mount. I really don't. Although Guardiola does it with only Rodri's as Yusuf, he does no, he doesn't, mate. 
It, I mean, I, I don't I don't even want to have this conversation because he doesn't and it's completely different. Um, you know, at times this season, he's played Kovacic with Rodri. He's played Bernardo Silva there. Last season, it was Gundogan. He, he, the person who plays with Rodri puts in a, a shit... I mean, I, I remember watching Gundogan... And, and also, look, Man City ain't good this season. Man City are quite vulnerable this season. But last season, when they won the treble, you'd have Rodri and Gundogan. And Gundogan was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous work rate. He was always back in the defensive box and in the attacking box. Incredible. Incredible. And De Bruyne does it as well. And the wide players do it. Mares last season, obviously, Foden. Um, they work incredibly hard, that Man City side. Sean, welcome to Members Club. Um, so saying that Man City do it with one holding midfielder is also, is for one, inaccurate. But for two, massively inaccurate because Rodri is surrounded by players who know how to play the system and work ridiculously hard to make that system work. How many times do we see Man United getting broken on and half our team is jogging back. That wouldn't happen at Man City. So, I mean, you, you can't compare Man City to Man United. You can't say because Man City have got Rodri in a holding role, we should be able to do it. We don't have those players. We don't have those coaches. It, 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 it's, you know, it, it's ridiculous. It's like comparing your mate's wife to yours when, you mates, when you've heard what your mate's wife's up to and yours doesn't do it. Completely different situation. Uh, what are your thoughts on Palestri and why Ten Hag barely plays him? Um, I've always said that I don't think Ten Hag is a big fan of Palistri. I don't think he is. I think he's had more than enough opportunity to pick him. And I don't think he does it. Um, I'm Jacker. I don't think he does. Um, I, I think if Palistri played for Pep, he'd play a lot more. He's got a low centre of gravity. He's got good passing. But I think it's a physicality thing. I, I think it's a physicality thing. He consistently picks an underperforming Scott McTominay and doesn't give many chances to Palistri who tends to come on and make things happen. What's the difference between Scott McTominay and Palistri? Apart from position, I think it's also, I think, I think physicality. I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little tip here. Um, if I get this wrong, I will gift 100 memberships on Saturday's watch along. And here it is. Remember this because you be, could be getting a membership on Saturday. I will gift 100 memberships on Saturday on the watch along if Scott McTominay doesn't play. But I'll tell you now, he shouldn't play because it should be Maynou, Amrabat and Bruno. But he will play because we're playing West Ham, who are a very physical side and are very good on set pieces. So straight away, we're back in the days of Oli and we're back in the days of Mourinho where we're picking a tall player because we're playing a team that plays physical football. Now, would Jurgen Klopp do that? Would Arteta do that? Would Pep do that? Would they go and pick a tall player because West Ham like to play from set pieces? Would they bollocks? They'd go, fuck West Ham. We play the way we play. They can deal with us. We will pick McTominay on Saturday because he is tall. Hi, Mark. If Anana keeps making mistakes, would you expect United to be in the market for another number one goalkeeper, says Eric? No, I think we're going to... We, I think the manager has, had, has to stake his reputation on what he's done there. And I think he will stick with him. Uh, tactical Statistician says, I can't wait to see Casemiro and Amrabat together. I can't wait to see Casemiro back with anybody, especially Maynou. Hazib, welcome to the Members Club. Thank you very much. You are very, very welcome. Um, I've just realised I'm getting in trouble because people are saying, you're meant to be on that football. You're doing a watch along for Liverpool versus West Ham. I am, but I'm enjoying myself on here. So um, the game doesn't kick off until uh, eight o'clock anyway. So we will, we, we will be there for that. Don't worry about that. Um, but... Um, I'm gonna, I need a beer anyway, so I suppose we'll end it. Don't forget uh, Manscaped, 20% off, free worldwide shipping with the code TUS. Fantastic products. Get them now, delivered to your door. They are game changers in every area you grow hair. That's going to be a new one for 2024. Uh, thanks for watching. Hey, we can continue the conversation on That's Football. It was a hilarious show last night. We've got loads and loads of uh, funny stuff going on and conversations. And I'll see you over there in a minute. But uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. We're back tomorrow on the United Stand. Loads to catch up on today. If you've missed any shows, we spoke about the Sancho uh, uh, termination of contract and why it's bollocks. Uh, and the morning show was good as well. Casemiro, Maynou and Mount, says Keel. That's very imaginative. Uh, let's see if it happens.